people usually associate Espressif with Wi-Fi chips. With the ESP32 P4, Espressif has been planning an ecosystem play for quite some time, providing a compute-only high-performance chip using by and large the same well-liked IDF development framework. And I just got my hands onto the ESP32 P4 evaluation board, which still contains an engineering sample silicon, but is more or less retail available. And in the following steps, I'm going to show you the hardware and the bring up. Here he is. I wanted to really say thank you to my friends at Espressif for sending this so quickly. You see, they literally reused a shopping box from one of their employees to get us access to this as quickly as possible. So really, thank you so much for sending this so fast. And yes, let us look at what is inside. And we see here, oh wow, this is already the production evaluation board. And yes, we also got a nice Espressif t-shirt here. I'm gonna say thank you very much for that. And here we've got some packaging material. And yes, this is the actual board. Here we've got the package. We see it is neatly sealed here on two ends. So we are going to cut in right here and right here. And we're gonna pull this out and we see, oh, very, very nice. Here we've got the evaluation board, which has these smart rubber feet, not dissimilar to those which we know from classics such as the Lurate. And then here we've got some small accessories. We have an LCD wire here and a camera here. This is an integrated camera module. And then we continue here because it's a very nice, very heavy box. And you must be careful because here at the bottom is where the actual LCD is. So this leaves here in the very bottom of the box. And yes, this is the LCD for the rest of the thing. And then after this, we've got the box completely empty. And yes, this is very, very high quality accessories. So probably I will just put it together and keep using this to store my board in the future. So before we continue, I have to ask you for help. Please down there, like and subscribe, because only if you like and subscribe, this channel can grow. The most important aspect first here, you see this is the actual chip and you see they are still hand labeled because this is a very, very early revision of the P4. And here we've got the whole board once again. We've got the GPIO interface for the P4. Here over there, we've got the C6 wireless module along with its programming header. Here we've got an ethernet plug and we've got a few USB ports here. What is neat is these are all USB-C. So we see here you can use an USB-C power supply. And here on this side of the board, we've got the two MIPI connectors for the camera and the display and yes, the usual reset and boot button, and finally a microphone. And if we turn the whole thing around, we see here a micro SD slot. And very interestingly here, we see something which is labeled RTC battery. So probably if you want to use the RTC, you could point solder to these two points right here. And this, this brings us to the display board where we find here another such MIPI connector. And very neatly, 
we see that this fits at the bottom like so. And here we have an accessory baglet. And in the accessory baglet, we find four of these screws, which you can fit together however you want to, the MIPI cable, and then a few data cables and power cables to enable the whole thing to fit together. And before we put it together, I wanted to point something out. If you look carefully, you see here, there is a covering foil on these screw things. And this is made so that the pick and place machine's nozzle can grab them. So these parts actually get probably placed and soldered in using a pick and place machine. Or alternatively, if they are not soldered in, but to me it looks like they're soldered in, this cover can also be useful as it protects the mechanics here during the actual reflow process. To put this together in the first step, because I don't want to go and buy any more screws, I'm just going to use these guys here, put them here and screw them in. Nothing particularly difficult and the benefit is you see you get a bit of a space also so that the board doesn't lay flat. And yes, I have the feeling that if we would use these short ones here, and the long ones here, the whole assembly would stand better on the table. But for now, we're gonna be using it mostly turned around anyways. So I'm gonna let it be for now like this. So these four go in here. Like so. And then in the next step, here of course you have to insert the cable, but this is something which is relatively simple, you know. Open these, be careful not to damage the latches, you just pull them up with the hand from both sides like so, put it in and then push it down to close it. And as for the actual link up process, you see that there is here a website and if you go here below to the getting started, you find the hardware setup instructions. And here, this table tells you how to connect the display. Because there are some, it, first of all, of course, there are the power cables. And then there are also two communication cables. One is intended for resetting the display controller and the other one allows pulse width modulation, modification of the brightness. And the DuPont cables, which are included in the hardware baglet, are intended to handle this here. And yes, of course, this is generally also pretty useful. So if you want to find out more about the chip at hand, this is the page to visit. This is then how it's finally assembled. And you can also theoretically use a second USB power supply here to bring power to the display. But I'm going to be experimenting with this little setup initially and I'm not going to drag in the camera just yet. Before we power it on, don't forget here there is a switch on and then here we have power in port and that's the port where we're going to connect my trusty Orange Pi power supply. I put it here and we see it lights up, it lights up and we see here, oh boy, it's alive. And here we get an LVGL based demo. So if we try, we see here, we get our little calculator and we've got some more LVGL demos. And here, if we click into settings, we even have the Wi-Fi options. I mean, this is a pretty impressive 
out of the box demo. Here we have an audio thingy, the about device. You see it uses the AUI framework and it tells us what we're using. It's still a very, very early software version. Here we can also adjust the display brightness because of the PWM cable which we connected before. And yes, there is a camera app which however, as you see here, fails because we don't have the camera connected yet. Then there could also be a music player based on LVGL. But for this, I think we need to connect a headphone or something, no, not a headphone. I'll have to check that soon. But in the meantime, we see here LVGL. Also, here are the various demos, the widgets demo, for example, which shows the whole widget GUI stack. And yes, sometimes this happens, but in the end, this is a very, very interesting, very, very well done. I mean, you see how smooth the screen reacts and all the animations. This is something which I just really like. And yes, to run a benchmark for the end, as you see here. And then here we've got the results. You see here, we've got the weighted frames per second, 39. And here we've got the case reports in case anybody of you wants to see it all in detail. But this to me, looks very, very impressive. I mean, it's a very nice, especially given that it's still at such an early level. This is a pretty impressive work on the side of Espressive. Before we check out, I wanted to still tell you how to purchase the board. I mean, I got mine as a present from Espressive, for which I'm very grateful. But as of now, the main retail channel you see is AliExpress. You go here, you look for ESP32P4, and then you must be careful because you see here, this is the official store and some of the other stores sell it at a significantly higher price. So this at the moment, is the official item and you see here you can ship it using AliExpress only. So there is no DHL option here. And with that we've got the thing up and working and we see it's not vaporware, it works, it runs, it computes. And now of course the question is how do you profit from it? And in the next video, I'm going to show how to bring the ESP32P4 up and how to code for it. And maybe we're also going to do some benchmarks. So thank you for watching and please like and subscribe so that we can grow the channel together. Thank you.